Hi, my name is Dave and this is NTI Online. Today we're going to walk you through replacing the flow group, which is the group on the left hand side here, and the return group on your TRX uh, 85, 110 combi, 120 or 150 combi. This procedure applies both to the Series 1 and Series 2. The internal parts are identical. Before you begin this procedure, you're going to want to remove the plug from the wall to disconnect power. Using the isolation valves in your system, isolate your boiler from the heating and domestic hot water system. And then using the drain valve that's built into the boiler underneath, you're going to loosen this. You can use a piece of tubing to direct the water into an appropriate container and you're going to drain the boiler down. I'm going to drain the boiler and the next step will show you inside the boiler and how to disassemble it. Now that you have your boiler drained down, we're going to go inside and remove the flow and return groups. Open up the electronic cover. Make sure that this cover remains on the boiler and it's a good idea to take some paper towel or some rags and just cover this up because no matter what, there's always going to be a little bit of water left in these when you take it apart. And we want to try and avoid getting any unnecessary water into the electrical components. I'm going to start by removing the burner door and the electrical box assembly. It's not required that you do this, but it does make it much easier to remove the internal components. And for the purpose of the video, it'll make it a lot easier to see what we're doing inside the boiler. So I'm going to start by taking the junction box off. Disconnect the wires from the burner door, combustion fan motor, spark transformer, and the igniter. The air intake muffler assembly can be pulled off and set to one side. You're going to loosen and remove the upper gas connection here and loosen the bottom one. Keep these gaskets for reassembly. Use a 10 millimeter wrench to remove the four nuts for the burner door. It's easiest if you start with this bottom right hand one. Carefully remove the burner door assembly and set it to one side. Now is a good time to inspect both the burner and the combustion chamber and clean it if necessary. Now that the burner door is out of the way and we can see what's going inside the boiler here, let's remove the wire harnesses that are going to be in our way. So we'll start by disconnecting the diverting valve by pulling on that. If you're reaching back here, the water pressure sensor, you can pull that connector off and disconnect it. Take off the wires to your return water temperature sensor, pull these off to one side. Disconnect the pump and pull it off to one side. The next step is going to be to remove this pump assembly. Now it's not required that you remove or disassemble the side of the boiler, but it does make it easier to see for the purpose of this video. So I am going to remove this side and push it off uh, just a little bit so you can see inside better. And if you have the space in the field, it does make it easier, and it's a very simple step. Start by removing the Phillips screws at the top and bottom of the cabinet, and there is a Torx T20 in the middle at the top and bottom of the cabinet. You'll want to remove those as well. Once the screws are off, you just need to push the cabinet off to one side like this. Next step is going to be to remove the pump assembly and we're going to start by disconnecting the clip that holds this copper pipe to the bottom of the heat exchanger. Pull that off, set it to one side. There are two screws that hold this pump assembly to the boiler, one in the upper left hand corner and one in the bottom right hand. We'll start by removing the upper left hand screw.
You'll know have the, you have the correct screw because they look a little bit like a wood screw and these are just a, a self-tapping plastic screw. Then we're going to remove the one in the bottom right. Now this one is partially obscured by the return filter that goes to the assembly. You don't have to remove the filter, but it does make it easier if you do so. Start by removing the horseshoe clip and then gently pulling on the filter. And it is normal to get a little bit of water when you do this, so it's best to be prepared with a piece of paper towel. So while you have the filter out, inspect this to make sure it's clean. If you're only replacing the pump assembly, you'll actually transfer this to the new pump before you reassemble the boiler. Now that we have that out of the way, we'll remove the second screw. At this point, the whole pump assembly and the copper pipe will be removed as one piece. So gently pull this to one side. Use care because water will drain out of your pump, so you'll want to collect that. And then set this to one side and you're going to transfer the water pressure switch, the copper pipe and the sensor over to your new pump assembly if you're putting a new pump in. We've now exposed this return group in full. You can see the diverting valve is up top here. We don't have to remove that at this time, but you will be transferring it to the new assembly. So it's best to take it off. It's a quarter turn white metal holding bracket. And then the flow group itself is held in place with this horseshoe clip. We're now ready to remove the diverting valve, so you'll want to grab onto this metal horseshoe clip. And these are fairly stiff, but you can pull them out. Take that out, set it to one side, you'll need it for reassembly. And this assembly is now just held in place by friction and overs. They do tend to stick in there quite well when they've been in for a while, so just be aware of that. And this is your diverting valve assembly, that'll get transferred to the new flow group. Now that we have our diverting valve and our various pipes and horseshoe clips disconnected, we need to go underneath the boiler and remove the retaining screws that hold this uh, to the bottom of the boiler. And to do that, you'll need a Torx T20 screwdriver and we'll go underneath and show you where those screws are. Underneath the boiler, there's screws over here coming up through this gray plastic into the bottom of the flow group. There's four in total that need to be removed one in behind your uh, domestic water cold inlet if it's a combi if it's a non-combi this pipe will be unused there's one beside it and then two more on the side of your heating return now that these four screws are out of your way we can remove this return assembly from inside the boiler cabinet once you've removed the screws from the bottom of the boiler, you can now remove the return group. You'll notice a little bit of water has collected in the bottom of the boiler here. If you do get a bit of water collecting, there's a little drain plug in the front here you can pull out, and this will allow the water to drain from here. Take your rags or paper towel and dry up any remaining water that may be in the cabinet. Gently rock the return group side to side. 
pull it up and out of the boiler. At this point, you'll be replacing the return group. The flow switch cap will be transferred from this assembly to the new one. So remove the horseshoe clip. Using a pair of pliers, gently pull on this. And that can now be transferred to the new boiler. This piece here is the flow switch uh, magnet that operates the boiler if it's a combi. If it's a heat only like the product I'm using here, it's essentially just a plug. To reinstall those, push them in firmly so that the o-ring seats reinstall the clip and to be sure that you've got it just give it a good tug and make sure that it cannot come out to reinstall this part you'll want to inspect the o-rings on the brass fittings make sure they're in good condition and at this point it's very helpful if you have a little bit of silicon grease or plumber's o-ring grease to lubricate each of these o-rings and the parts will fit back together much more easily if you do that you want to start by reinstalling the component you're replacing. Press it down firmly. Before you reinstall the clips, reinstall the screws at the bottom, uh, at the bottom and screw them in tight. Then reinstall both of your retaining clips. Reinstall the screw that holds the bypass pipe or plate exchanger on. Reinstall the bypass pipe connection, pressing it firmly in and putting the clip back in and making sure that it does not come back out. The next step we're going to do is remove the supply group and to do that I'm going to start by removing the supply pipe. So pull out the retaining clip, set it to one side and pull the pipe out and just be aware that you can get some water stuck in that pipe. Now that the pipe is out, we can remove the two retaining clips that are in the base of the cabinet here. One of them is obscured by the condensate drain. Pull that off and set it to one side. Now that we've removed these clips, there's one screw on the left hand side here, a Torx T20. We're going to disconnect that, and this will disconnect the bypass pipe that goes from left to right. And if you have a combi boiler, this will be removing your plate heat exchanger. And you can hear that some more water is draining out as we remove this. That's why we have the cover over top of our electrical panel. Down in the bottom, we removed the clip that holds the bypass pipe earlier. But we can continue and push that out now and set it to one side. Now we have to go underneath the boiler and remove the screws that hold the supply group. So now we're going to move under the boiler and we're going to remove the four screws that hold the supply group in. These are again a Torx T20 screw. And those are the four screws that hold your supply group. Once the screws are removed from the bottom, now we can pull the return group out. And watch out, there's always a little bit of water left trapped in these. So take this, set it to one side, and then install your new part. 
when you go to install these, it's a good idea to put a little bit of silicone grease on the O-rings on the brass fittings and any of the O-rings that are being reinserted. Uh, the silicone grease just makes everything fit together and helps seal up any possibility of leaks. To reinstall this, you're going to reinsert it into the cabinet, push it down firmly, then reinstall the four screws from the bottom before installing the clips and the pipes back into the part. And that concludes replacing the flow and return group on your TRX 85, 110 Combi, 120 or 150 Combi. Hopefully you found the information today helpful. If you have any questions, please call our technical support department at 1-800-688-2575.